In today's video, we are going to be breaking down Fred Van Fleet and how he shoots the basketball. Fred Van Fleet is one of the best shooters in the NBA and is one of the best guards on the Toronto Raptors. Fred Van Fleet currently shoots at 39.3% from the three-point line and that is definitely over the minimum 32% that you would need to have to be a higher more efficient player in the NBA. So let's break down Fred Van Fleet. Okay, so in this first clip, we have Fred Van Fleet doing a quick step back, which is one of his go-to moves. Next, we want to look at his feet. Where are his feet pointing? And it seems to be that his feet are pretty well straight towards the rim and maybe just slightly off from where the rim is, but pretty straight anyways. Next, we want to look at his shoulders. Are they in line with his knees and toes? And yes, they are. By having your shoulders in line with your knees, in line with your toes, you are going to have a very powerful shot and a very balanced shot. This is very important if you are looking to be a consistent three-point shooter. Next, we want to look at the face. We don't want to have our eyes looking at the ball. We want to be looking at the rim. You want to be really looking at the rim before you even gather to shoot the ball. And that is what we see with Fred Van Fleet. Next, what we want to look at is his gather. Where does he gather that ball? And he actually gathers that ball right in front of his hips. We can see there. And then he's able to bring it up quickly, very quickly up to his chest and then up to his set point. Another thing I really want to focus on that a lot of players don't focus on is his feet. His feet are very important and so are yours. And what I mean by that is check out his heels. They are off the ground the entire time. The reason for this is because your calves are some of the fastest muscles in your body. They are called fast twitch muscles and they are able to get you off the ground super fast so you can have a faster release. And this is very important if you're looking to be able to shoot the ball over a lot of different defenders. Now even though his gather is at his hips, he gets it up to his chest very quickly and then he brings it up to his set point. His set point seems to be just a above his right eye and over towards the right side of his forehead. When he goes up for his shot, now we are looking at his elbow. Is his elbow in line with the shoulder facing towards the rim? Now by having your shoulder and your elbow in line with the rim, that's going to be a very straight shot. Next is, is the elbow underneath the ball and I don't mean by underneath the ball like this what I mean by underneath the ball is if you're looking at the same plane towards the rim is the ball over top of the elbow in the same plane towards the rim and that is what we do see in other clips especially this one from there what do we want to see we want to see if he has a 45 degree angle between his shoulder and the elbow and the hand or is it a 90 degree 45 or 90 well what we see here is a 45 degree angle that's going to give him more power towards the rim but it's going to cut down on his speed because by having a 90 degree angle you're going to have a much faster release on your shot but the fact that he's able to bring the ball up to his chest almost right away after gathering the ball and then brings it up to his set point that's going to be really cutting down on how much time it takes him to get rid of the ball. That's why he's a very fast shooter. He can shoot over a lot of different players. And then from there, what we do see is the energy transfer from his feet all the way up into his legs and into his arms. Now, when he shoots that ball, when he releases that ball, some players will release the ball. Players like Ray Allen will release the ball on their way back down while Fred Van Fleet releases that ball right at the top of his jump and then he keeps his elbow above his eyes which is going to give him arc. Now we need to look at a few other things as well and that is, is there a space between the ball and his palm? And as we can see, the ball is floating near the fingertips. There is no palm touching that ball. You would have to have those fingertips pointed back a lot farther, which means that he is having the ball off of his palm. Now, what that is going to do for you is for you to have a more in control shot while having the ball sitting on your palm may give you a straighter shot. 
having the ball up on your fingertips is going to give you more control over it and it's going to ultimately give you a better shot. Now when a player does release that ball we want to see what fingers it comes off of and right here it looks like it's going to be coming off of his middle finger because his middle it looks at this point be coming off of his ring finger, middle finger and pointer finger so which means that most likely it's his middle finger that touches it last and then the next thing we look at is how he flicks the ball. Is his hand flicked hard down? Is it soft like this? Now, it doesn't necessarily matter. Everyone has a different shooting form. Michael Jordan had that stiff, straight down flick, while players like Van Fleet and Steph Curry have that soft release, that soft flick. The hands don't flick down fast. Now, is there a difference? Maybe. If you have a harder flick like Jordan, you may be able to release that ball faster, while with a softer flick, it's going to be sitting in your fingertips a bit longer. Now, if you are moving in your jump as a player, because it's sitting in your hands longer, it may affect the shot. And we do see Michael Jordan drifting a lot in his shot, which would make sense why he would want to flick it harder. But if you're doing a setup shot like Van Fleet does, and he very rarely shoots on the run, even though when he does, like this right here, we see him shooting on the run. He still squares up his body to the rim. And that's what I mean by squaring up your body. Whether you're doing a fadeaway like this or shooting regularly, we even though he's shooting off balance in a sense, he is still balanced in his shot. He is able to turn his whole body around, have both of his shoulders and his hips square towards the basket, which allows him to have that straight shot. He's able to bring that elbow around to be in line with the shoulder, and then he's able to have that ball still come around and be on top of the elbow, which allows him to have that straight shot. That's why even his fadeaways tend to go in a lot of the time, especially this one. Now, the reason why it bounces around like this is because it had, check out how much arc that had. That is going way off the screen, and because it's way off the screen, that rim looks a lot bigger, and it's able to bounce around a lot more. And then when he gets that ball off the catch, he doesn't dip it down to his hips. He brings it down to his chest and then up into his shot. And even though he had a defender on him, he was able to get that shot off in time because he brought it straight to his chest, but also by having a high release, getting that elbow above your eyes, you're able to get that high arc. Like, look how big that arc is. This is why arc is important. The higher your arc, the bigger that rim looks to the ball. I hope that this video helps you shoot the ball better. If it does, hit that like button and subscribe, and I'll see you guys again next time.